What is up? Welcome to Talk, Talk Toys, YouTube's number one hype beast podcast. I'm once again joined by the top three hypest hype beasts on the internet. We've got Wizard Lad Gaines. We've got Tim the Pickup Artist. Yo, yo, yo! And we've got Dan as well. He's here. Hello, Dan. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Uh, <laughs> So, do, do you want to keep that intro? It's it's up to you. I I, I, I thought it yeah. up, but... <laughs> Before I cut out, so... <laughs> I think I cut out. Uh... Uh, oh, wow. No, it's fine. I mean, it, it's more hype. It's more hype beast. You peaked, so yeah, yeah. you went too high. I feel, like you guys, I feel like you guys are all ripped, and I'm just, like, in the corner. <laughs> hey. Uh, right. Hey, I've got, got my... Sensible drink. <laughs> I've got my by any means necessary North Face hoodie on, so there we are. Uh, I know, I know. Tim got that blinged out uh, Supreme hoodie for Christmas as well. Uh, a spare, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously. And the um, oh, um, B set Charizard on her necklace as well, of course. There we are. That's uh, you know, it, it's how we roll. You, you know, you'll, you'll know, you'll peep the channel before. I literally, um, I, literally I have my mum's sweater. Yeah, it's it's very nice though, Dan. <laughs> I mean, you know, she didn't need it anymore. It's a bit big, but it, it's, the, it's the thought that comes really at Christmas, isn't it? Um, and boy, it's been Christmas. It has, it, it, it's almost the end of the year, in fact. Um, it's 2022, and this is Talk Toys. So, as you can tell from the description below, this is what we did last year, but for this year, it, it's magic. So, right, as with last year, we'll be going through the categories uh, as with the last Talk Toys wrap-up. So, we'll be basically discussing what it is we've done throughout 2021 on a range of topics. Uh, it's not really the same as most wrap-ups, as you will see when I describe them. But, lads, are all three of you ready to get through looking back pensively on 2021? Yeah. Yes. I guess. <laughs> all right, then. So, we're going to have three topics in this episode and four in the next. What's it going to be? Well, watch and find out. Uh, so, the first topic, and I think, to be honest, one of the longest-running ones, probably, as it's going to be uh, something we're all very passionate about, and that is the best game you played in 2021. Now, I'm just going to explain a caveat here. This is not necessarily the best game of 2021. I chose this because... To be completely frank with you guys, I have played one game that came out in 2021 this year. Uh, so it's going to be a very quick list, and to be honest, there's a high chance, I don't know about you guys, but there's a high chance that I'll pick the same one as everyone else. So we're just going with the game you discovered and you loved the most in 2021. Uh, so as is, as is standard, I will begin. Uh, so my pick for best game I played in 2021 is... Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, uh, which is the version that comes on the Kingdom Hearts HD collection, for those not in the know. Um, and yeah, it's I'm, I'm kind of going through a Kingdom Hearts phase at the moment, as Tim well knows. Uh, we've been discussing it about it a lot. And I finally got onto Kingdom Hearts 2. And by goodness, it is... You know, there's those games you play when you're young. Uh, you know, sort of like maybe 10 years ago or something like that. You've got kind of foggy memories. Be like, oh, that was a lot of fun, man. I need to play that again. And sometimes you track it down. You're like, oh, hmm, okay, this this isn't as good as, you know, it used to be. I, I, that I thought in my mind. Kingdom Hearts 2 kind of did the opposite to me. Like, I played it. I'm better than I remember. Yeah, well, so I played it, but I was a bit of a sort of casual at the time and to be honest i played until i think i got to the pride lands which is roughly 50 percent in the game maybe a little bit more um can you finally make sense of the plot yeah i mean it <laughs> it's, it follows as best as it we go can into the plot in 2025 yes uh so the other so the other benefit i think part of the reason i enjoyed it more this time is because i have played kingdom hearts one and rechain of memories now with a lot of games, I mean, hell, some RPGs, Final Fantasy is a good example. You can dive into the eighth game and it's fine. You know, it's th that's the fresh game. You don't, It doesn't matter if you played the previous one. Kingdom Hearts is not a forgiving game. There are, no. there are so many bits throughout the game, not even just the start or just the end, where there'll be conversations and you're like, mm hmm, mm hmm. Who are those five people they mentioned? Why, why are they angry at each other? What the fuck's up to that guy's hair? 
Um, Wait, so, tell us. <laughs> yes, and and Mickey. Wait, I oh. mean, Mickey's more of a part of it now. I understand more of why Mickey is there. Not fully. I don't think. I don't think the producer. I mean, you know, you. <laughs> On the one hand, yeah, you say, you know, it's it's not very forgiving. You do have to play um, the other games to understand. But even if you have played the other <laughs> games, even if you played the first two games, you're still through half of the game going, what? Yeah. So, wait, wait, what was behind the door to darkness? Was it was it <laughs> dark? Uh, what was behind Kingdom? I good grief. So, yeah. um, it helps. It, it helps. But it does not give you a... Uh... I mean, I played I played the game all the way back in two thousand and six. I'm I'm gonna say when it came out. Hmm. Yeah, I think and so. Yeah. I think the big selling point of Kids and Hearts two, um, specifically, is the 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 levels that you know. Hmm. It's each each world that you go to. I can't remember if we were on like a ship, and you'd yeah, a uh, post the Caribbean. Oh, yeah. oh, sure. Oh, yeah, the the gummy ship and stuff. Yeah, um, and I remember the uh, the nightmare before Christmas one. That that was memorable, and all the outfits that you get. It's. Um... Mm. I, I'll be honest. I uh, I played the Mulan level, and I was like, you know what? It's been oh, it's been so long since I've seen Mulan. I'm gonna rewatch it, and I I watched it, and I went back to the level because you you revisit the levels later in the game, and holy crap, the amount of details they put into the worlds is. Phenomenal. Mm. Uh, I I was just like watching the movie and playing the game, being like, "Oh, wait a second! That that's that like post with the arrow in and stuff." And it's like, oh. but uh, honestly, the one thing that kind of kept me coming back, one of the most you know like reasons, is the gameplay. Now I I enjoyed it as a kid. You know, it's because it's kind of casual friendly to start with, but the more time. And experience and stuff you put into it, like I, I was pulling off Devil May Cry combos basically, like near the end. It's <laughs> it it just it doesn't it doesn't feel anything like Kingdom Hearts. It's like they were like, oh, you like Kingdom Hearts? Yeah, well, we're not doing that kiddie shit anymore. Here's a real game, and I mean, Tim can attest. I I did the grind no. to level ninety nine. Oh, oh, that's a um, that is a grind and a half. And yeah. it, when you were saying earlier about um, Kingdom Hearts 2 kind of bucking the trend about things that aged well from when you were a kid, it also bucks the trend in that it's a sequel that is arguably better than the first. Yeah. It, oh, it doesn't happen very often in games, but Kingdom Hearts 2, it's it's better than 1. Yeah, There, I, there are certain aspects so. of 1 that, uh, that some people prefer, like the magic. You, you you needed to use magic more in 1, and that kind of mm. helped with the combat. But overall, 2 is just more fun to play. You just you can do so many things and yeah yeah two is it's it's a better game than one and I I will take that opinion to the grave yeah same honestly it's um it's easily in my top five games like ever it's not just the best game of twenty twenty one it's like I I didn't I didn't want to leave it really like I'd done pretty much everything <laughs> apart from the uh, data org fights and I was like you know what be hard yeah like I and honestly. I haven't written it off, so I won't go back to them. Like it's that good a game. So, yeah, honestly, that that is my pick for twenty twenty one. Would anyone like to go next? I just want to say, you ways the cars world. <laughs> well, well, it, it's Take it's not it's knows. not over yet. It's not over yet. Three had lots of Pixar. Three had a lot of Pixar in it. So you know they're they're clearly open to the idea. Do you want to see Carsora do some? Yeah, yeah. So I've 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 yeah. seen I've seen enough of Lion Sora. I don't no. I'm I'm okay. I'm, please please go ahead. <laughs> just, just, I know I know what audience you're going for, but I I don't I don't want that in my games. Thank you, Square. So Yeah, <laughs> keep it in the bedroom. Can you feel the love? Oh. But yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Would anyone like to go next? I'll I'll, I'll go next. I'll go next. Yeah. Now, I have to admit to something. Um, for this category, I you might consider this cheating because I did not discover this game in 2021. That's but I started funny. playing it last year. I started playing it last year, and I played more. I I touched on it last year briefly, and I played more of it this year and completed it for the first time this year. So yeah. I'm gonna say. Of it counts. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, no argument. 
the game the game I'm going for for my uh, game of 2021 is Yakuza Zero. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, it was my first Yakuza game. I never played um, the other ones. Controversial, I know. Since playing it, everyone's kind of said, no, no, you should play the uh, the other ones first and then go back to it. It means more. But I, I don't know. I just went for it first. I didn't understand how the chronology worked when I was when I was picking this game. I just saw it. I'd heard things about it. And I was like, oh, well, Zero is probably a good place to start because... Hmm. It's it's the first number it comes before one, but um, you know maybe it would have made more sense if I went back to it after playing the originals, but I didn't. I just played it, and oh my god, what a fun game! The thing about it is, it was not what I was expecting at all. Hmm. From from what I'd seen gameplay wise, and from what I'd seen of other people playing it, I thought it was a standard, you know, action kind of game. You go around doing yakuza stuff, you beat people up. And you know it, it's it's a pretty solid game. I did not know how much of the kind of whimsical comedy side was underneath that. Like I had no idea. I went into it just thinking it was this, as you see it, take it for what it is kind of mm. yakuza game. And obviously that side of it is is really fun, and it would be a great standalone game if that was the entirety of the game. What really solidifies it as just. Again, up there in not just the best games I've played in 2021, best games I've played altogether is the ridiculous like proportions of the side quests and the characters and just how over the top things are. And yeah, it's it's definitely one of those ones where I had more fun doing the side quests. See, I remember the you actual. buying the, the game, and I thought you bought it because of the. Back of Mitai uh, <laughs> song. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it definitely helped. I think that helped it um, come into the kind of into my head from because I, I heard the I heard the song before I played the game and I thought, oh, it's that song from that game. And then I started reading about the game and I was like, oh, that sounds pretty fun. And then yeah, it, um, it blew me out, it blew me out the water. Blew no, it, it blew it blew my expectations out the water. That's, That's what I meant to say. It didn't blow me anywhere. <laughs> In fairness to um, I haven't beaten it yet, but I've got a little bit through it. I've done a lot of the side content specifically. Um, yeah, I was cool. advised actually to play Zero first because it's a great entry. Ah, mode. okay. So hmm. I was because it's a prequel to one. Um, people said, "Oh, you could play it," and. From what from what I'm getting from what you're saying is uh, there's a lot maybe that they refer to that was kind of shredded in the first game, and if you had played maybe the yes. first few, then zero would like be like a nice callback to like an origins for the Akaza series. But um, I think zero works well as a first game as well, to be honest. And um... I mean, yeah, it worked for me. It worked for me, and it definitely got me to like. I'm already I've, I've downloaded Kiwami now, and I'm going to play through the other ones. So it's done its job. But from what I've read, from once I finished it, a lot of people say. I mean, I guess you can do either, but a lot of people are saying you appreciate Zero more after you've played them. Yeah. So what I'm probably going to do is just play the original and then play Zero. Well, again. you might like. Oh. Uh, what's the other game that that came out after? Like a Dragon. Uh, I mean, yeah. I've got a fucking, I've got a couple to get through before I get to there now because it's a long ass series. Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah. yeah and there's a lot of um, spin-off ones. Unfortunately, not all of them have come to the West. There's a um, what's the other one? Lost yeah. Judgment. There's oh, there's Lost Judgment, which um, so they've decided with the newer ones now. The Yak as a main line is now a turn-based RPG. Yeah, and... they're sticking up there, aren't they? Oh, okay. And those ones, um, they're actually going like the original Yakuza game, so they're like actiony combat and stuff. Um, there was like there's a spin-off I particularly want to play. It's based in feudal Japan, but they never released it in the West. There was also another they one tend to do that. Don't they? Hmm. There was another one that they haven't re-released, but it did come to the West. Which was like a zombie apocalypse, Yakuza. So they've they've gone a bit wild with that series. I think they've uh, really gone wild. Yeah. 
I um I have Yakuza basically once Kingdom Hearts is done is my next big series thing because my my only experience with it I played the demo for one on a PS2 demo disc years ago, uh, which is oh. fun. But you know it's it's probably it's probably changed a bit since then. I imagine maybe uh, mm. Tad. I got uh, <laughs> when I played it. I got really into the the little cart racing thing. <laughs> Yakuza Zero. Now <laughs> I got slightly into that i got into that a little bit but what i really got into was managing the hostess club i was just <laughs> there for hours oh, yeah i don't think you got this far but when you uh, later on in majima's story you get to just manage this horse club you, you take it over and you have to like take over areas of the city from other <laughs> clubs and then it all, when you get enough of their customers you have a fight with the person who owns that club and <laughs> oh hours hours it's, it's like a it's like a management sim and oh very very addictive Dangerously so. Do you think it harkens back to like? I know you like Final Fantasy, and Final Fantasy Seven was it had the chocobo rayers in. Do you think mm. like these like kind of side activities kind of hark back to that sort of thing? Yeah, I can I can definitely see the similarities between the two, um, because it is something that on the surface looks like something you can just dip your toes into but once you've done so you will be there for hours like again your hostess up to the max rank or getting yourself a black chocobo or whatever so i can see the similarities nice. and again th- those are things when i played um final fantasy I-, I i kind of went a little bit completionist and was like well i i have to get I have to get the black chocobo. I have to, you know, win all the triple triad cards in Final Fantasy VIII. So, <laughs> these are the kind of things that attract me to games, apparently. <laughs> nice. Uh, right. D- does does anyone want to take over for the next nomination of 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 their game, not the next? You know what I mean. I'm happy to go next. Mm-hmm. So, this year, I I think I played a lot of games, and I I honestly think at the end of this. Uh, if Dan doesn't mention them, we need to give honourable mentions, I think. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm happy For to do a quick run. Game... Right? <laughs> well, the thing is, there's some games that I haven't picked deliberately because I thought you guys would pick them. But I'm, I'm seeing now <sighs> they're probably not going to come up, which is kind <laughs> of funny. Um, so I think it'd be worth mentioning them at the end. But my yeah. game that I've picked that I really enjoyed... Yeah, uh, it's called the Forgotten City, and that oh, actually did yeah. come out this year. Um, yeah. So point. this year is like the year of time loop games, apparently. <laughs> um, mm. You had Death Loop, yes, and um, Forgotten City is another time loop game. So basically, I'll explain it very basically because i don't want to give away to plot too much but you wake up by a river um and you're told to go explore this roman ruin and you go over there you go through like a time warp and you appear in like this roman town um and the thing of this town is it has something called the golden rule and whenever this golden rule is broken, everyone gets turned to gold by these like statues which are situated around the the town. Oh. And what you've got to do, you're tasked by like the Roman governor, and I've got to say the actual like attention to detail when it comes to the historical time period is great in this game. Um, and the golden rule basically is if someone sins so you've got to keep going through these time loops like working out what a sin is firstly what sins are Hmm. so for example like you find out quite early that lying isn't a sin but things like killing obviously are um and you've got to keep going through these loops and prevent any sin being committed. Now, this story has a few different endings, which is great. And um, 
there's like there's like a really good ending but there's other endings as well but uh you will end up going through millions of these loops i say millions uh quite a lot of these loops yeah and um honestly it's such a refreshing game and the story um actually won a bafta oh uh, shit for wow. how well it was written mm-hmm. and this believe it or not this game started as a mod for skyrim oh so ah. there was a mod on skyrim called the forgotten city and it was skyrim themed it was to do with the the dwemer in the game but they decided to do their own thing or full out with it hmm. and release it as a standalone game and instead of you know relying on skyrim law etc they just did like an ancient city and it's an absolutely beautiful game as well it's not very long um i think i spent a whole day on it and managed to get most of the endings but oh it's just so satisfying working out the puzzles it is one of the most satisfying like games and everything you do has like an impact on the game and you don't see that much especially in like the time of telltale games where everything you do doesn't do anything yeah um okay it's an absolutely phenomenal game and uh honestly it's my game of the year um i think nice. um, um it's great because um i probably wouldn't <laughs> have bought it uh i got it on game pass so i thought i'd give it a shot because it's on game pass and oh thank god they did so yeah that's my uh choice i don't know if any of you have heard about it but uh You've With mentioned play, it. Chance. Uh, I think you mentioned that it was coming to Game Pass. Yes, but, it's uh, it's uh, it's been on there a while now, so it's worth a shot. Sweet. I might Ooh. give it a go if it's on Game Pass. It sounds interesting. Is um is using the Forbidden Machina one of the sins? <laughs> 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 uh, and also, uh, we here at uh, Imminent Tortoise also do not accept sins, uh, and you know we're always looking to correct those who have sinned so uh you know the name of our lord yeah, yeah, uh, sins, yeah. <laughs> not that topic dan i think you're the last person i am um yeah so i'm i'm the same with tim uh as in i played this game at the right about the end of 2020 but finished it in like march of 2021 so okay. uh and that game is Bloodborne. Now, ah. the thing is, with you know, when people throw out things like, oh, that's a masterpiece, that is um, perfect. And I always think, like, oh, right, there's no such thing as a perfect game. But honestly, I think this is a flawless game. It mm. is, I, I love it. I love every single moment of it, and I remember. Thinking, Fuck all our games. No game is perfect except for this. Fuck you yeah. guys' choices. The other one is the only game that hits all yeah. the boxes. Yeah. No. The <laughs> other ones are just like trash. Hidden Hearts Two. Yeah. Wherever. Wherever. <laughs> no. uh, um. But yeah, it's it's weird because I I I remember um uh the first time I played uh I remember going to um the comic-con in london and they were showing off the demo of this yes, game yes i remember and i remember playing that and thinking oh my god this is next gen playstation 4 and and uh i died almost instantly um but um and then i i've tried playing the 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 game for a couple of years but i i could never get past the the starting uh village uh and i think uh, even um uh, Red, you came over to my house at one yes. time, and we tried playing it, and now, you were like, "I, I'm, I'm in the same boat as old Dan." There, I've played, I played at the same Comic Con as Dan. I, I have Bloodborne. Uh, I have it on disc and the free PS Plus version they give. Uh, and yeah, I have not got very far in it yet, but you know. But the thing is, I, uh, I mean, last year, as I said on. <laughs> I mean, I I, uh, I put down Dark Souls as my favorite uh, game that I played in 2020, and I just fell fell in it love into so the much. and I fell in <laughs> love with the the Souls uh, Soulsborne series basically. And uh, but 
Bloodborne is is one of my favorites. Um, it's I think I think because I'm trying to wrap my head around why I like it so much, and I think it's the um, it's the atmosphere. It's like the the, the combat is really aggressive because in um, in like Dark Souls, you have your shield up and you roll and then you attack. Uh, but you, the shield is one of the most important things, right? Um, to parry and things like that. But in, in Bloodborne, you do not have a shield. You have you have a gun, but the gun is not really like it's more to like that's their way of parrying. But it's it's there um, and encourages you to attack more because like if you uh, lose HP and then you attack straight away, you get to uh, um, build back your health. So it does really encourage you to go in there and be as aggressive as uh, possible. And also the bosses are, are really incredible as well, really disturbing. Um, and it, it gets more Lovecraftian as you play. Um, but one of my favorite things, I think one of my, my favorite things about this uh, game is it, the balls to like uh, leave leave things uh for you to figure out and and do your own a uh, thing like like so like they have um like a whole level area called uh castle uh no canehurst castle right and you can uh, the, the only way you can find that is if you go into a certain room and then you pick up like a summons and uh item right and and it just uh, tells you to go to a certain road in a certain level and you and if you go there a carriage and ho a horse and carriage come by and you go in and then it takes you to the castle and you that's the thing i was just sat there and i, I like saw a whole entire level and it's a massive level hmm. and it's got like all these vampire ghosts in there and all all just a whole entire area but i could have easily missed that had nice. I not picked up that item and the balls to do that in a, in a game is I think very uh, like uh, risky impress risky yeah. risky like, yeah it doesn't beep you at all does it, it doesn't hmm. doesn't so are you roll... saying do you prefer do you prefer Bloodborne to Dark Souls oh that's a question I'm thinking. Find out next year. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> tu tune in, I... tune in to uh, Talk Toys 2022. Do you know what? Okay, I will say I th I think so. I think so. Now, wow. the I I love I love the world of Dark Souls, and I still think it's one of my favorites, like easily in my top five. But I think Bloodborne takes it uh, takes it up a notch, and um, and I I just love it. Uh, the atmosphere, the combat. Again, the bosses and like the oh, some of the monster designs are really disturbing as well. And and I, you know, I I like to think I can I can stomach a lot of things, but that there are some like there's one that um, monster that I, I can't remember the name, but uh, it's like in a dress and its head is like a bulbous thing and it's just filled with eyes, and it just goes la 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 and just moans around and it's it's the most creepiest thing i've ever seen and i think oh my god what what am i playing and uh, it's oh, a masterpiece it's sadly the that's only what one i, I ever played um oh. I, I, yeah i played it's... all the dark souls games where it's only I, I can't play blood Bowl, it's only only. Released, I don't know if it is. i really want to oh, play it more. yeah but, but like, apparently yeah go on yeah I did hear that Dark Souls 3 kind of hit a midpoint between Bloodborne and Dark Souls 1. Yes, they did. Um, in terms of how flow, well, heavy the combat, how slow and stuff it is. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah, because I picked up, um, I played uh, again, I played Dark Souls 3 this year as well. And it picks up, it takes a lot of um, inspiration and influence from Bloodborne and so what you get is a it's very much still dark souls but you still you've got uh it's a little bit like the the enemy types are a bit more aggressive and um 
but the, 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 my, the one thing I love about Dark Souls, the, the first one, is how interconnected the whole world is. Because you, you go through some levels and then when you come out uh, into back to where you started, you feel like, yo, that's yeah. really cool. And a lot of other games don't really have that as much. And uh, like... Uh, especially well Sekiro especially and and Dark Souls 3 because you could just sort of uh well with all the other ones you could travel anywhere as much as you want but with the first one it was like right well if you want to get there well you're gonna have to hmm. walk over there the long way um but uh but yeah um cool. as I said Bloodborne masterpiece if you haven't played it try it and yeah yeah not to pre the kind of, one. With those games, I really want to like them. I really want to like um, Bloodborne and Dark Souls, but every time I try to play them, I just get so angry. It just makes me like, I, I it, like, ten minutes in, I'm like, this is, this is, and I think if I, if I properly sat down and kind of went through them, I probably would get to a point where I enjoy them. But I, 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 I was the same. Them. I was the same because um, one of my friends um, started playing them in. Back in, back when I was in uni, and I like, he, you know, I was trying to play. Uh, I think Dark Souls too. Uh, I know that's the that's the bad sheep of the the group, but even so, I tried getting into it, and I, I just, I it it didn't click for me either. I tried playing Dark Souls, and I thought, this is this is way too hard. I'm not good enough. And I just sort of left it. But then it kind of that's the thing that I think it calls out it, it calls out to you, think, Come on, beat me. You the can thing. do it. And you and it's there clawing at you and I'm like, Oh fine, I will do it and then <laughs> The thing is, if you learn like so I started on Dark Souls one. Uh I didn't unfortunately again I didn't play Demon Souls, same reason. But um it took me a while to learn, but once you learn, you can play all of them. I feel, mm. and uh, you you pick up kills and stuff. Um, very much, obviously, it's a lot of dodging. Uh, unlike other games, it's mostly dodging. In terms I will of say, combat. I will so... say, I think because um, I think the one that clicked for me was Sekiro. Um, uh, but I would say, I think I say. Bloodborne is a lot easier to get into than the, I think the Souls games because, like, uh, the there's a lot of like uh, smithing involved, and you gotta like uh, upgrade your stuff. But once you get it, you get it. But I think Bloodborne is like, oh right, well you want to upgrade this? Okay, well, I mean get this item and then done, and you do it at the hub world. If that makes sense and. It's a lot easier to upgrade stuff, and it's kind of a no nonsense thing. And you can also get these. Um... Oh, it's been a while, but you get like these runes things that you could put on the weapon, and that can give you different kind bloodstones. I think it's called, and you and you get different sort of uh, attributes to it. And um... but um, I'd say, yeah. I, I mean, all I can say is give it a go and try and then what's and then that's the thing the beauty of it is when you do kill a boss it's one of the best feelings in the world it's none there's none like mm. it hmm. like you earned it i can imagine yes nice uh right should we quickly go through some uh nomination uh, like uh what do you call them mentions run the uh, right. yeah. i'm saving I'm saving one of my honourable mentions because I'm bringing it up later on. Okay. So I, I do also... have an honourable mention. Don't think, huh? Tim hasn't mentioned that game he's been playing non-stop for the last three months. What? Uh, I'm bring this up later. Okay. Uh, cool. In that so case, I... I won't mention that particular game. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I think for for brevity and stuff, we'll have one honourable mention each. I think because okay. otherwise we're going to have to do three parts basically. Um, <laughs> do you mind if I chuck mine out first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because just in case one of you was going to pick it now. Yeah. Um, so all of us spent a lot of time around mid-year uh, yes. playing Sea of Thieves. 
Yes. And uh, mm. I, we put a lot of hours into that. Uh, I yeah. don't know, did we hit the hundreds? So it wouldn't surprise uh, me. I think it was like 70 for me, maybe, or something. Yeah. Yeah, I think we almost got to the hundreds. But yeah, I agree with that uh, honourable mention. It was very fun. It was yeah. absolutely incredible. And I don't know how long we should speak about this, but like... Um... Yeah, I, I, well, I think it's just going to be honourable mentions, basically sort of mention them. Um, okay. Because well, yeah. otherwise we will just have to do uh, se- several Oh, parts. yeah. So I, I forgot mine. Uh, nearly 70 hours. Nice. So... Yeah, oh, no, no oh, Sea of Thieves, very fun game. It it it, uh, it it really impressed me. My expectations were average, but yeah, honestly, it 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 far surpassed them. Uh, it's one know. of the good live service games out there. I think mm. I, it started off. I think it started off uh, in uh, pa- Paddy Waters. Is that, ah. is that the saying? Uh, rough waters. Rough waters. Yeah, there we go. And yeah, it, it was a uh, rough release, but yeah, honestly, I think it's... it's only improved over time, especially with the the updates that they have. And and yeah, I I I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 in around this, <laughs> I like uh, uh, <laughs> I like the dynamic nature of it. That's the only thing I want to mention. I want to. I just want to say. It's in. It's very similar to Dark Souls in that. Dark Souls. Has <laughs> yeah, an, an interesting it's the comparison. Dark Souls of multiplayer yeah, games. No, there we are. No, Dark Souls has player invasions, and okay, basically, I get see your you. thieves. Yeah. You're constantly doing stuff, which is PVE. But you're always under threat of another crew appearing and going, ah, so all that treasure you just got in that island, yeah, we're going to destroy your ship. And then you have to fight them off. And uh, honestly, it was frustrating, but uh, I think it was one of the most enjoyable aspects. Yeah, so many, so many memorable. Good, so many good memories. Hmm. Uh, so my one's going to be really quick. Um, yeah. It's my... Personally, a game I spent a lot of time with this year, and I know none of you are really going to have as much to say about it, which is why it's going to be quick, uh, and that is a mobile game called D4DJ. Uh, it's, by the, it's by the creator of Bang Dream. Uh, it's, it's like a mobile rhythm game stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just been a lot of fun. I'm, I'm very much into rhythm games, uh, so this is my kind of thing. It's got cute anime girls as well, which I think is... Uh, definitely worthwhile and honestly yeah the the events are just fun because it's like kind of a point grind but there's a reason to have all the different characters because you'll have events that are like themed after oh there's this one band and they all have attributes so uh and i've not spent any money on it so it's a gacha game i enjoy that i have spent literally zero on but still very much enjoy oh not get into too many games (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Stick to my one, I think. Yeah. Uh, right. So, would anyone else like to give a uh, shout out? I'm going to throw a quick honourable mention to WarioWare. Get it together. That was a ah, very, very yes. fun addition to the WarioWare series. I, I fucking love me some micro games. Um, yeah, really well done. The, the, the fact that the one thing about the old WarioWare games is you're playing as not really a character. And, the fact that they brought all the characters in and gave them like really unique controls that were really made it a lot more fun. So um, just really, really, really well done on WarioWare for being fun to play. I'm not saying anything else. And yeah, v- Keep very it short. V- <laughs> Take the gun away from my head, please. <laughs> very, um, mm-hmm. very, very fun. Just like as a party game around Tim's, we've had a lot of yes. good mm, memories. With it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, my. Um... Honorable mention goes to uh, Tales of Arise. Now I'm quite shocked because, um, as uh, the uh, uh, these folks know, I'm not really into JRPGs that much. However, um, I picked up this game and I. The thing was, uh, is is one of those like uh, it looks. You know, it's it's very much as I said a, a JRPG. But if you go by the looks of it, I think uh, you'll be missing out on a very good action game. And the story that comes with it is really um, is really good as well. And uh, you, 
and um i just love the anyway i love the action um and uh some of the you know the monsters you fight as well it's um and the characters are like they're really fleshed out as well that's what i really like about it as well and um yeah it's a really pretty game as well like there's there's a lot to be said about it um uh, but the, the, there are like some sort of things like uh sometimes you you know you you reach you go back to certain places um again randomly or or sometimes if you like characters saying the same thing over and over again in a fight it <laughs> might annoy you but but i i the thing was that charm it adds yeah. to the charm. It adds to the charm. I and mean, it's, before... it's kind of a trope of JRPGs in general, really. Yes, so, yes, you know. that is true. It's true. But it, it, I was, I was generally surprised, and uh, some of the characters you meet as well, like, uh, uh, you, like you find uh, there's this, this this guy who's really into food, and he's like this, uh, like food critic, and uh, you. Basically, it's one of those, uh, right, go and get these ingredients and then come back and you get a recipe. Now, that sounds like in most games, but for whatever reason, it's really charming and um, and I love it. So um, that is worth checking out. Nice. Uh, for sure. Uh, right. Well, th- those were our, that is the uh, gaming section. That's our honourable mentions. Um Right, on to the next part of Talk Toy. So the next nomination uh, category, I think is the correct term, is uh, much, kind of following the same rules as games, our favourite music in 2021. Now, again, this does not have to be released in 2021. Um, and also, just to kind of make it a little bit more kind of fluid, because, you know, I know... Not everyone listens to full albums and stuff, uh, you know, throughout the year. I'm also opening it up to genres or music you've discovered in general or whatever, you know. But basically, what you've been listening to most this year. Okay. Um. So, as is tradition, I shall begin. Um. So, I am going for a kind of traditional pick here. Not only is it an album, but it's an album that released in 2021. So, for those who aren't happy with the rules, it's like, oh. That game came out in two thousand and six. What 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 are these guys doing? Uh, it is it is technically modern, uh, and that is Your Mori by Mori Calliope, uh, which is an EP, I think, rather than an album, because it's about twenty minutes long. Um, so, roughly speaking, the sort of the genre, I suppose, would be hip hop more than anything, um, and of course, you know, those with culture will recognise the name. Because Maury Calliope is a VTuber, uh, part of Hololive English, uh, who's, you know, she's kind of been known for dropping songs and stuff, does karaoke streams, but I was very pleased to see that, especially this year, she's really branched out into the world of music as well. Um, so Your Maury, I think, came out quite early on. It's got like five, six tracks or whatever. Um, and yeah, honestly, it's even even forgetting the VTuber thing, even forgetting any reason that I'd like this person at all. I think this is a really, really solid EP. Um, because it's while I while I say it's hip hop, it kind of dabbles in other genres as well. It's you know it's not your standard kind of stuff. Um, and also something I really appreciate, which is it's a hip hop album that the kind of focus is kind of novel because. You know the the songs are about being a grim reaper, mm. stuff like that. You know, kind of it's kind of self depreciating and stuff, and it's it's quite refreshing because a lot of hip hop kind of does follow a general theme of like you know sort of isn't money. Yeah, well, yeah, it's it's very boastful <laughs> and it gets a little bit tiring. It's like, yeah, we know you're the best in the world. You, it's it's four minutes, man. You've you've made your point. We know. Okay, get on. But no. Um, I'm going to interject. Mm-hmm. I also pick Maury Calliope. Uh, <laughs> well, I hope we've got a backer. Uh, well, it's, it's fine. I, I mean, I, actually, t- to be so honest, I'm going to interject oh. a bit on yeah, this. The, there's no rules against sharing it because we can both. And undoubtedly, Tom, you've probably got your favourite songs or you know stuff so, as well. So, um, actually, I was I wasn't going to point to that album, but I was going to point to. A, Newest single, 
Ah, yes. Uh, which is absolutely be- beautiful. Absolutely mm. beautiful. It's called End of a Life. Yeah. And I think it's about her almost like her in real life like kind of life she did do she did talk about it a bit in depth on one of her streams and i think that song meant a lot to her like making it yeah and um she's got i don't know how to explain with her style she's got like um well lower fi kind of style to it so um i was gonna say actually that she the reason she sounds quite different as well to hip hop that you might generally listen to, uh, and the kind of lo-fi reasoning as well, is that clearly, you know, she like she's. I think she lives in Japan, or she's lived in Japan or wherever, and so she, she collabs a lot and works a lot with music producers. Now, a kind of a very sneaky quick mention as well, because it's it's a group I discovered through Mori because they've worked together. Um, is Boogie Vox, who are a Japanese rap duo. And Ooh. it seems like the producer is either the same or very similar, or they kind of rotate in that circle because they seem friends. Uh, it's very... I don't want to use the word Shibuya rap because I could be wrong. It You know, maybe it's not Shibuya-based or anything, but they both very much sort of mention and seem into that kind of scene because, like, Japanese hip-hop is very... It's very different than over here. I mean, it, it shares similarities, obviously, because it's a genre. But uh, I don't know. It's. I mean, what what I really like as well, and this is going to be a controversial statement, is that this is the kind of hip hop I really like because the backing track is almost as good as the vocals and every other part of it. Oh yeah, you could definitely listen mm. to them in isolation. Yeah. Whereas, and th- this is my spicy opinion, but. A lot of Western hip hop these days have triplets on the hi hat and just sort of the same oh. kind of beats and the same like instrumentality is like a, a third tier kind of thing. It's like, oh, it's it's got to be the prestige and the words first, and we'll just put like general, you know, like drum beat in the background, and that's I don't know, I'm just not as into it. <laughs> I know, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it also sounds... as well. Um, uh, it's. This may also be a controversial statement, but when it comes to VTubers making music, I don't think anyone's doing it better than Mori Calliope. I know oh, we yeah. all know I've got my favourite. We all know <laughs> I've got mine, but I think, objectively speaking, I don't think yeah. anyone's doing it better well, than, than Mori. Well, she's, it's no secret. She's mentioned before uh, in her streams that, uh, you know, music career is like a big yes. thing for her. Yeah, previous and, um, to becoming a VTuber, she worked in the industry as well. So you, you, you can clearly tell. It's not like, a, oh, I'll mm. try this. It's like, you've done years of this. We can tell, you know. It's it's not like they've got someone who's very likable and stuff as a VTuber and then said, oh, tax a music on. Mm. No, the music is almost like the key. Yeah. The whole point yeah. of it. And... Um, Mori Calliope, I think I agree to him hundred percent. She is possibly the best musician amongst all the VTubers I watch. Not saying that <laughs> certain other ones aren't oh, like a little bit behind, only a little bit. But yeah, she is yeah. phenomenal, and it's not just music. it's not just the quality; it's the constant quality as well. Because yeah, she kind of puts out a lot of hits, and oh, it's like they're all good. There's no like um. Hmm. I, I even... no, she's um, consistent. That's what we're looking for. Consistent. I'd even go so far as to say that it's it, it, it's probably something that people who aren't into hip hop would also enjoy to a degree. I reckon because it's it's interesting enough that it's not you know it's not your standard for yeah yeah it has a wider appeal and I think people who aren't into VTubers can also enjoy it because it's not yes. just I have hundred percent seen. Uh, like reviewers specifically of hip hop on YouTube, mm. listening to Mori Calliope and saying that she's absolutely phenomenal. I think she's got um, even God forbid she stops being a VTuber. Uh, yeah. I think she's got a really good music career ahead in the future. For sure. Yeah. Uh, right. We we'll stop gushing about cute anime girls now. Uh, <laughs> 
Would <laughs> someone like to nominate their next pick? I'll go next. Okay. So, I actually had difficulty with this one this year. I almost went with another VTuber. I didn't in the end because, uh, because I had a feeling that somebody else was going to pick a VTuber. I was like, I don't want to make this too fucking weeb central. So I was struggling with this one because I didn't listen to a lot of new music this year. I went through my um, Spotify raps and I was like, this is all very fucking nostalgic stuff. I've clearly had a very um, year of looking back. <laughs> but there was one um, specific artist who, who cropped up near the end that uh, I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's someone who I I got into this year and I, I want to check before I start talking about this um, lovely lady that just just I want to make 100% sure you had no views of getting this video monetized or Absolutely anything right? no. Oh, oh no, for no, god's no. sake there I we go you're going so, to pay yeah. oh, no. this introduces <laughs> me to my wonderful artist of 2021 by the name of Cupcake <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. I, at first, I thought it was no. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say cupcake because it's too much of a jokey thing. But then I was like, I don't want to pick anyone else because everyone else is gonna pick them, and I guarantee no one else is gonna pick cupcake. <laughs> True. Um, so I've started listening to cupcake this year, and even though it is funny, the music is funny. They're bangers as well. I can't. I can't deny it. I can't. I'm not gonna sit here and take a uh, judgmental opinion on her music purely because of the subject matter. Because <laughs> <laughs> good job. But what I want to do is, I just want to um, <clears throat> sample you a couple of lyrics, a couple right. of my favourite lyrics from uh, from from com- some of Cupcakes' best hits. <clears throat> so, I change the thongs two times a day. It's Niagara Falls in this pussy all day. It's the first one, you know, that's, that's pretty tame, you know, she's, she's just, you know, talking about making references to uh, famous landmarks and her pussy. Um, the second one, <laughs> name anything freaky and you know I'm about the shit. Only time I'm not on the dick is when I'm about to shit. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, she's taking it in a slightly different direction, but I really appreciate the fact that um, in both of those, in the first one, she's rhymed um, day with day, and in this one, she's rhymed shit with shit. So wow. clearly, clearly, she's up there. Her, her brain, <laughs> her brain. Okay, um, the, ne- the next lyric I wanted to single out was... <clears throat> Alter Ego is a freak hoe, dick swimming like Finding Nemo. Now, <laughs> there, you can see she's shown some growth, yeah. because now she's re- rhyming words with other words that aren't the same words, and, you know, also referencing Finding Nemo, who I don't think was swimming um, to find dick, but, you know... No. But I- we I'm can't sure, be sure. Um, you know, exactly, exactly. We, 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 when our picks are, we didn't make a film. <laughs> and, then, and then the last... <laughs> The last lyric I wanted to single out, which is possibly one of my favourites. Don't need no drink to get naughty, no. Because, bitch, I'm not Bill Cosby. (laughs) 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 Wow. (laughs) She has the audacity to go there, you know? She's calling people out. She's, she's, um... I mean, she's not afraid to cast a bitch. They are certainly memorable. I, I would compare. I think if I had to pick a favorite cupcake song, it would definitely be CPR. CPR's up there, and uh, and vagina, and vagina, of course. <laughs> I I would compare cupcake because you've you've played a few tracks to us. Um, I would compare cupcake, and I think this reference is only going to really hit, hit with Dan. But you know, um, uh, Notorious B.I.G. Dan, you know his first album. Y- yes. There's a track in it, and I don't know if it's the extended version or the the regular one. I can't remember the name of it, unfortunately. But it's just, it's got that, like, 45-second sample of, I think I read him having sex with a woman in his car. Um, It's just, it kind of, it stops. There's there's no more there's no more rapping. There's the, the, We got the backbeat, but it's just, it feels like he put it in the wrong folder when he uploaded it, basically. And it's... There's a lot of um, a lot of mourning in, in yeah, Cupcake's it's, tracks, so I can see where you're coming it, from. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of that. And I was like, when I first heard it, I was like, fucking hell, I, how, how long is the track? Okay, it's another 40 seconds, all right. But like at the end, I was like, no, you know what? They they weren't they weren't going to show you away or be like, yeah. mm, this is a little double entendre, do you get it? Do you get it? It's like, no, <laughs> no, there's, there's no subtlety here. It's in your face. Yeah, and I. But also, the thing about Cupcake is you can't bring up Cupcake without bringing up V 
the amount of remixes of Cupcake. Because <laughs> she's kind of gotten to like, she's gotten to like Smash Mouth levels of, if you think of a song and type it into YouTube with Cupcake remix on the end, one exists. Yes. It, it's, it's, she's gotten to that level of stardom. Um, particularly good ones are the um, the Anchor Zone remix, which is a whole other topic that um, oh, we'll God. get into. But that's that's that's, that's a banger, and the um, the bo- uh, Bohemian Bohemian, okay, but it's Bohemian but Moan instead of Bohemian. Ah. I'm trying to say it. It's a tongue. Ah. Bohemian Bohemian Moan Bohemian 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 Rhapsody. There we are. It's another. Um, we got that in the other example. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Growing up with my speech impediment. <laughs> uh, right, unless anyone else has any cupcake quips to add, uh, we'll move on to Dan's pick and the final music pick of this. Again, much like Tim, uh, this was very like because I listen to uh, music as much as I can all mm. all the time uh, when I work from home, and uh, uh, and the th- 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 that's I you know I would I would love to do like uh, run the reps at least, but uh, for me, uh, and I, this, this also surprises me. The my um, album of the year actually goes to um, uh, Hayden Pedigo, uh, and and the album's called Letting Go. And mm. what's weird? Well, there's nothing weird about it. It's it's just guitar instrumentals. Uh, mm. uh, but when I say it, it's just guitar cent- instrumentals. It's 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 not a um you know like uh, oh okay there's no there's no vocals or anything like that but no it's it's well there's, there's so much to it it's there's there's a lot of atmosphere on on the album and and i put it on in the morning when i work and i feel after listening to it it's kind of like uh uh the only way i can describe it is a bit like when you know when sunlight um comes down on you and you feel its glow and mm. you feel at peace that's this record it's uh um some of the because what he, he uses um like a six to twelve string guitar and the things uh how he plays that guitar uh is unlike um well he's there's a there's um in the 60s there's this other um guitarist um and he did instrumentals and his, his name was john fahey and that's about as close uh i can imagine what this person is is like in, in terms of comparing but i think to compare uh an art uh to, to someone uh could to compare another artist to someone else would be um a, a bit of an insult because what he's doing is uh very very unique but like I feel at home when I listen to this, and when I'm uh, working on my own, I feel at peace. Uh, well, I have like it's it's nice because when the the sun comes in through the window, I have like a batch of hot coffee. I have the dog underneath me, nice. um, next to me, you know, just sleeping, and I'm there working the day, and it's it's uh, you know it's. Uh, I I feel uh, bliss. I know it sounds yeah. like really cheesy and, and cliche, and um, but um, I, and the album. I think what drew to me was the album art because the the artwork is uh, uh, so it's a very sunny back. It's a painting, so it's a very sunny background. Uh, there's a red. It should be truck. on screen, hopefully. If I've uh, yes, yes, for it, for it, for anyone else to see it. But yeah, it's uh, and the. Uh, and then there's the artist and he's like dressed all in white and he's wearing a black metal face with long black hair like a metal <laughs> like a metal head ro- uh, rocking out but it's nice. uh, uh yeah uh, and i thought oh that's uh very strange and odd and uh i was thinking oh is this going to be like some metal album and uh it turned out to be the opposite uh but i was i was so glad that i learned to pick it up because um uh because it's a bit of a like ambient stuff going on as well and like because I, I really like brian eno uh, uh brian eno albums and uh mm. one of them is like um uh, I, I think it's called apollo and uh 
and there's some like the second half of that album has like uh again uh i think they play with a steel guitar um and it's i i'm pretty sure one of the songs is used in train spotting um as well uh, so it's, it's quite well known but it reminds me of of that and because uh, i pr- i preferred the second half of the album and for me this was like the whole of that album and um i just i just uh love living in it, it, it like if yeah. <laughs> you know so uh yeah overall i feel at peace when i listen to this album and no and uh while there were really great albums and you know but for this one, I, uh, I, 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 I put this uh, as my number one. Uh, I think it's, I think it's a perfect uh, record. Nice. Well, I don't think the three of us could have picked three more distinctly different yes. artists. Very uh... well done to us. Well, we could have picked four distinct different. Uh, artists. Yeah, technically. Uh, I guess. Well... Uh... But no, stick around down. because in just 365 days we might have something new. <laughs> See, so come in soon. I if should you... uh, should upload that pretty soon. So keep keep an eye out. Uh... I'm not saying to do this. If we're doing honorable mentions for music, if we're doing honorable mentions for music, I'm giving mine to Yanis. There you go. There's my. There we are. Ah, oh, there you go. Right. Well deserved. Okay. Shall shall we move on to films? Oh, I thought we'd do an honorable oh, mention. Uh, Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can do. Uh, I don't. Out. I don't have one. Uh, but y- you guys go ahead. Um. So honourable mention for my um, for my music. Uh, Tim said, "Let's not get into it," but I'm going to get into it. <laughs> camel by camel by Sandy <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll I'll um, get the album cover <laughs> up on screen. I'm sure oh. people will recognise it for another reason and not the album. The, or rather the, the single cover out, so. um yeah it's uh well it came out of nowhere um <laughs> a certain certain thing got popular on tiktok but the song is an absolute banger it is actually a banger I, the, <laughs> I agree. the one in the meme is God, an instrumental but like the vocal version i think is absolutely perfect and uh Never heard of it till now, so I'm glad it's been highlighted in the internet conscience. <laughs> yeah, it it is a very catchy song. It it's one of those that like once it becomes used in a popular way, it's sort of like, like movies, videos, whatever, it does start it's like, oh, oh okay, actually, you know. I can imagine the artist be like, yo, this song's really exploded. <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah, I wonder why. Let me let me Google it. Oh. <laughs> so I'll I'll leave I I'll leave the viewer discover though why it's popular themselves. Uh, yeah. I I want I want that to be my gift to you guys. You know, if you really want to go down the the rabbit hole, work out why it's popular. And listen to the cupcake remix while you're there. there you oh, go. oh yes, yeah, we uh, are put f- full circle. <laughs> uh, I'll say then. Um, my runner up then is um. And so this was a, a. I nearly had this as my number one, but uh, but no, this uh, one was uh, by Floating Points and Pharaoh Sanders and the London Orchestra, I think, okay. and it's called Promises, and it's like a fusion of electronic music, jazz, and uh, you know, like a full classical orchestra, mm. and it's 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 fantastic. I love you know, but um. But yeah, uh, but as I said, I, the, the album I listened to the most was uh, Hayden Pedigo's Let and Go. So, uh, nice. so uh, yeah. Cool. Well, shall we move on to films? So much like the last two categories as well, these can include this year's films, of course, if you want. But these are our favourite film that we watched in 2021. Uh, so I will begin. Mine, mine, mine's close. It's not a twenty or twenty-one release, but it's not far off. Uh, my nomination is the Lighthouse, uh, which I'll put ah. a, a poster of now. Um, so it released last year, or oh, well, technically twenty nineteen, but uh, we live in the UK, so most most art films release a solid year or two. Yeah, if, if it's, at all, it's weird over here. It was... Uh, who who what uh, studio release was it? A twenty four. It yes, it's an A twenty four. Well, I 
I'm not sure I'd say horror. It's more of a psychological movie. I wouldn't even say a psychological horror necessarily, but it's a mm. psychological film uh, without going too deep into it about two men who are posted uh, to look after and work on a, a lighthouse in a very remote island in, I don't know what year it is really, is it early 20th century, uh, late 19th? Uh, I'd say uh, 1800s for sure. Okay, there we are. So yeah, around about the 1800s or whatever. It's, it's a period piece and it's completely in black and white. So might put off a few people, but honestly, I highly recommend sticking with it because... The Lighthouse is a movie that actually, despite the fact at the time I wasn't thrilled about it, I ended up watching twice in quite a short amount of time, uh, which I usually hate doing with films. And I was like, I will passively watch this. That's fine. I guess we'll watch it. And um, honestly, after the second watch, I was like, wait, oh my God, this is this goes way deeper than I thought. Because honestly, it's it's a fairly simple movie. Honestly, like it's not on the surface. On the surface, you could watch this without really thinking about it and come away with a very interesting experience. It's it is unlike a lot of other films, but honestly, like it's, it, I mean, it's something A twenty four is quite well known for doing. It's it's not necessarily just horror. It's quite arty horror, and I, and I I hate that that sounds really pretentious, and I'm really sorry, but. I don't know. It really is. It's like one of the most artistic psychological movies I've ever watched, and I hands down recommend it just for anyone to watch. For me personally, I because I've seen the film, um, hmm. the dimensions of the film are quite interesting as well. Uh, but that's like uh, it's on a technical level. But what do you know? I'm going to say this. I think that film and Good Time uh, relaunched uh, Robert Pattinson's like. Uh, like yeah, career. That that's for perhaps sure. one of the strangest parts that Robert Patterson and also William Defoe, who I've always liked, but like he's always been that kind of actor. It's like, oh, okay, he's in it, cool. You know, I mean, he's a, I mean, he's a, he's already an iconic actor, but yeah, but this his role in oh, this God, is so just, good. Was so good. Um, I really liked him in. Uh, uh, wild at heart as well. Uh, mm-hmm. I thought he was really like creepy and disturbing in that. But I think and and obviously, uh, you know Norman Osborn. Uh, I think he was a really good no- uh, Green Goblin. Uh, one of my yeah. Favorites, I mean, villains. arguably this. I don't know how this will go down, but if you liked his performance in Spider Man, <laughs> I think the Lighthouse is right up your alley because it's <laughs> it's generally in that wheelhouse. He. It's- I really want him to be in a film where he can play Willem the Friend, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because uh, I haven't seen it. Uh, we were going to watch it, but then Rydian said, "Oh, I've seen it about three times." There. Yes, yeah. I, so... <laughs> I, I, I've I've watched it twice in the month of October. Uh, third time, I think. Despite yeah. how deep it is, I think I'd have, I'd have, basically, I'd have understood how Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson felt. I think that's. Uh... <laughs> They're the only two characters you see in the whole movie, aren't they? Yeah. Like, the, there's, there's literally no other character, is there? There, well, uh, well, but potentially, you know, the I mean, there's, glimpses, there's, uh, but we'll, the seagulls. we'll, yes, the seagulls. But yeah, definitely, and definitely the, uh, worth the sexy mermaids, but they don't of course. Count. Well, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, definitely worth a watch. It's funny how Willem Dafoe went on to Green Goblin. Well, obviously, replayed it again. Mm. And uh, Patterson's going on to do Batman. Now. Yeah. So, the, yeah. I, I have high and hopes. Willem Dafoe is, in, from watching Spider Man, he's the best part of Spider Man. Absolutely. Uh, no Way Home is. Uh, he was the best part. Like, hands down. Just so good. Um, yeah, right. Who, who would like to nominate their film next? That would probably lead in to a story I had about mine because mm-hmm. for the longest time I was gonna say Spider Man because I watched Spider Man and I saw I thought this is a, this is a fucking the best movie I've seen this year mm-hmm. nothing's gonna top this and then I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna say Spider Man but then and obviously Willem Dafoe was amazing in it but then I went back um, home for Christmas and I noticed there was a film on a streaming service that I've been meaning to watch for a very very long time so I watched the film 
and it took the place. I was like, Ooh. actually, no, this is the best film I've seen this year. Damn. It's taken over. So I finally, after um, about a year of really wanting to see it, I finally watched Jojo Rabbit. Ah, oh, yes. 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 Have we all seen that? Honestly. Yes. No. So I, I, I'm, uh, I'm the, I'm the missing one at, right. out of this one. I was going to ask that next because um, I'll make sure it's a spoiler for the <laughs> then. Yeah. But um, yeah. Um, to give to give uh, some background without without spoiling it, it's about a kid whose imaginary friend is Hitler. We've um, all the been. The kid there. is a Nazi. We've all we've all been there. We've all been yeah. there, and you know, um, Hitler is um, saying some pretty Nazi things to him. <laughs> Um, he finds out um, that there is a Jewish person being hidden in his house by his mother. Um, so he kind of has this um, ongoing thing throughout the movie of, hmm, I'm a Nazi, but there is a Jew uh, uh, secretly living in my house. He's also, so uh, as you can imagine, yeah, go on. Carry on. Uh, he's like he's a also... member of the Hitler Youth as well. And... Yeah. yeah, he's a member of the Hitler Youth. He is uh... very pro Nazi in the start of the film. He's very, um, you know, he wants to be, he, he, he fucking loves Hitler. And, um, yeah, he's not, he's not shy about saying it. It's like in and, an innocent um, yeah. way, isn't it? Like, it's, it's. That's something I wanted to touch on. In the way yeah. that they portray it, it's very off putting. Because yeah. obviously, you'd, you'd think, you know, they kind of shy away from that. But they do not shy away from it in any way whatsoever. Oh. They make it this weird, endearing thing that he's so super into Nazi stuff. And it could have very easily been a, a ridiculously insensitive movie. But the way that it's done, and obviously the context behind you know why it's done, and where the movie goes eventually, kind of turns that on its head. And the, yes. the way that it yeah. is so... Um, <laughs> the way they make it so kind of mundane makes it into a way that is almost making fun of Nazism, which hmm. you pick which up it on. Is. Right. Yes. Because, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to... Yeah. I won't let it spoil too much, but it it does, like, parody uh, the, like, uh, some of the, like, formalities of the, that the regime did. Like, whenever mm. a officers greet each other, they say, you know, Heil... Uh, fear or you know things like that, and but they would all do it. And there's a scene where they just keep doing it all the time, and you just think, oh my god, that's just ridiculous. Mm. That is. Uh, yeah. But um, no, honestly, I've. I mean, I watched the film. Um, I think in cinema uh, when it was released, and uh, but and and yeah, it is. It's 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 kind of weird because uh, some of the characters in it, whilst they are a part of that regime you know towards the end you sympathize a few with them and you know they really flesh out the characters and and stuff and uh but uh yeah fantastic film i uh i if you have not seen it yet uh, uh hmm. you should uh it will yeah i mean a... i didn't realize it was on streaming but now i do I it's think. on it's recently come on to disney plus uh, ah, who directed it who directed I... the film like i know it was Oh, yes, that's it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah, uh, um, yeah. Really good. I love pretty much everything that he's doing. Um, <laughs> Thor Ragnarok was one of the best, one of the best Marvel movies. Yes. So, um, yeah, yeah. And that scene that you mentioned when they say Hail Hitler, I wanted to bring it up because in the space of one minute, they say Hail Hitler 31 times. <laughs> which <laughs> wow. really goes to show how over the top it is and how, um, yeah. How he he is. also yeah, it's also surprisingly um surprisingly emotional. It, it definitely oh, uh, yes. puts on the heartstrings a bit later on. So um for sure yeah, and nice. it does it, it does it very well. Very well. Really and surprisingly like... um a lot of the times I fucking hate about these films is I hate kid actors, but mm. the kid actors in this are really really like really good. Like you don't get that kind of awkward. Oh yeah okay they're a kid, but no yeah the the, the, the like, kid actors are really good. Nice. It's Carry um. On, Sorry, I was going to say the casting's really good. Uh, Taika Waititi yeah. actually plays Hitler. And, oh, okay. uh, <laughs> He plays, like, this really... How should I put it? Like, almost like... Oh, I don't know. He's um, quite... Uh, it's a caricature. It's a caricature. It's of, like yeah. a ridiculous caricature. And it's uh But it makes sense. Funny. It makes sense because it is the... You know, it's the child's... Imagination, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Kids, but imaginary friends so of what he yeah, thinks, and 
and, and what he's being fed, or the information he's being fed about, you know, what Hitler is and what he's like. So it, it, it does make sense that he's so uh, over the top. It had, um, I remember Rabel Wilson was one of the, one of the, like, Rebel uh, was hilarious in it. And yeah. um, Scarlett Johansson was really good in it as well. And usually mm-hmm. I think Scarlett Johansson's a bit overrated, but in this I could see it. She did a really good job. She was really good in this. And I found out, um, like, uh, you know, they have like those who do you think you are uh, shows where they look oh, back yeah. at like the and ancestry yeah. and heritage. Well, apparently her her family, uh, you know, part of her heritage, they, uh, they were from Poland and wow. they were in the Holocaust, basically. Mm. Uh, so it's really... So you can uh, you could see oh right well no not only is she acting this but she's actually like kind of mm. Well, mm. I say passionate passionate is the wrong word but I guess it's pain perhaps she's paying home homage to them I don't know I don't know I don't know the person for but my point is she does a really good job of the 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 mother figure yeah. lastly really likable. Lastly, I wanted to mention Stephen Merchant in there as well. Yes, he plays. <laughs> yeah, he, it's He's like the scene stealer. Mm. He, it's like his character from Extras put into Nazi Germany. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know how to. And he's in like, one scene. He's in one scene. He's in one scene, and it's so it's such a memorable way that he does it. It's like, yeah, it sticks out in your head. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Nice. Um. Right, well, following on from that, who would like to nominate their film uh, for 2021 next? Yeah, go on. Cool. Um, so, I'll be all this year. I've watched many films this year. Um, there's only really one that's kind of stuck out to me. Um, and kind of on the theme of what I was talking about earlier, where we didn't watch Lighthouse, we instead yeah. decided to watch Hereditary. And hey. uh, that's going to be my film. No, hang on. Uh, Before we start, Dan, have you seen Hereditary? I did. I <laughs> no, no. Oh, There we go. Right. It, it, <laughs> so Dan's the one that hasn't seen this. Right. We're, we're going in a perfect circle, lads. This is... Uh... You've seen a good part of it. For context, I like, when we started I saw... watching it, yeah, Dan left halfway through. Oh, yes. No, yeah, I remember. No, that was a good point. I, yeah. No, I didn't leave because of the film. I, I had to leave uh, due to, to get home. you know, to get home, home and stuff. No, no, no. You stood up halfway through the film and said, this is a piece of shit. I hate your films, Tom. And you stormed <laughs> out oh, of the house. I cannot I see it. any way in which this ending will subvert or change expectations or anything like that. E24, not known for this. And he stormed out. It's very strange. <laughs> very specific. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, but oh no! Honestly, when I I th- there are horror films, and then there's Hereditary mm. is all I can say. That uh, from what I if, for the, the first hour that I watched, it was like gut wrenching, harrowing. It was just like I'm uh, I'm intrigued was... now, Tom. Give us your um. <laughs> Have you, have you have you prepared a spoiler-free um, synopsis yes, of Hereditary? So I, I... Uh, right, so yeah, you can't really, can you? So I, I kind of want... I, I think kind of the, wanted to watch it. Be the, yeah, the, the best way, Tom, is give the premise... Because, so, yeah. you know, because I, I don't want to spoil for anyone listening either. If someone, oh, like, has just heard of Hereditary, the last <laughs> thing I want is like, oh, that's how it ends. Right, well, and I won't be watching I, that again. Well, I do... I, I thought it'd be a good idea to watch because I was, mm. I don't know why, I think it was for my birthday, I said, I want to watch a film like Midsummer because I really yeah. like Midsummer. Um, and uh, it was like, oh yeah, the, the guy did Hereditary before Midsummer, So I was like, right, well there you go, Hereditary it is. And um, oh, how do I explain that? Oh, this is a hard one. Um, so there's like there's this family, and they have like a child who is a bit odd. She's a little bit odd. A bit um, odd. She, I mean, this isn't really a spoiler. It happens right at the beginning, but she, you know, she puts a dead pigeon's head on like a wooden mannequin, like a small wooden mannequin, and. Um, there's something it... off about her, and that's uh, that's important. And and also linked to the hereditary name is 
there's a bit of a strange air that maybe the grandmother that just passed away before the beginning of the film she uh, yes. what she was strange and kind of had something to do with possession but you know it's it, it's very much a psychological thing uh yeah it, it is unfortunately hereditary is a very difficult film to discuss spoiler free because it, yeah it is yeah it is um i think in terms of the feeling of the film it's a slower burn but in a mm. really good way it like builds up the tension throughout the film yes right to the end and it doesn't like midsummer it really doesn't like hold back on mm. the absolute gruesomeness <laughs> Of the, film, the one you know? shocking part that is really shocking was very shocking. The, oh, yeah, that the, one part the, where the shocking thing happened, good grief. That, the, that, that was are, one of the most shocking things I've seen in a film, I'm not going to lie. There, you. Are very mem- the, there are very memorable scenes that, like, it, it it sounds a little bit like you're describing different films, basically. that There's no... I don't think, unless you were sort of you know, somehow tipped off. I don't think you could watch your editory and be like, oh, I know what's happening. Yeah, no, that's that's gonna happen. I like I, I don't think anyone has that ability. It's such no, a such 100%. a journey. Yeah, I I thoroughly enjoyed the journey though. Yeah. And I like yeah, how it ended. When you do those kind of films where you're not sure where it's going, it can easily turn into this kind of um it can turn kind of cheesy and campy, but there's nothing cheesy or campy about it. It, 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 the, the twists and turns are surprising, but they're earned as well. Like the way yeah. it builds up to them, and the way it builds up the atmosphere, and the way it makes you uneasy throughout, and then throws them at you, and then they have actual significance as well. It's not just throwing twists at you for the sake of throwing twists at you, like some kind of crappy hmm. disaster movie. It's, it's doing it with purpose, and it really pays off. And yeah, so- very shocking. So, the director is only... He's done short films, which I still haven't watched, by the way. Rid mentioned There's one or there two, were a few yeah. short films on YouTube. But he's released two feature-length films that have gone out to theatres, and that's Hereditary and Midsummer, And both are absolutely brilliant. And they yeah. have similar feelings. And they're both fantastic. And I, from what I hear, he's going to release another film now next year yes so uh, i tell you what um here we go yeah disappointment boulevard uh so i'm going to watch that 100 yeah. percent. i go sure. to the cinema to watch that i think so yeah nice um yeah and unfortunately there's really not much more we can say it's we're we're dangerously close to spoilers as it is so uh it's really um, good. Take our word for it. Oh yeah. yeah. If if you like psychological, watch it. It's a trip. Um, right. I think if you want to watch the rest of it, Dan, I will watch it with you for a second time. There we, we are. We can have another um another watch together. Uh, oh. So Dan, I think you're the last person to nominate a film. I do believe. Okay. So, uh, the the my film of the year did I didn't actually come out uh, this year. Uh, I was tempted to say Dune Part One, but I'm not going to because I feel <laughs> like I feel like I need to see Part Two as well mm-hmm. before I, I make my my conclusion. You'll sit Tim off as well. He'll, I, I'll, <laughs> you know, but no, no, no. Uh, I'm so I'm going to reserve it until that that comes out. There are, anyway, but but my film actually goes to uh, Dorka. Oh, okay. From 1979. Um, so it's a uh, Russian film made by Tarkovsky. Um, and, yeah, it's it's uh, essentially what, you know, what, how, how can I say, what is the film about? It's um, basically, it's uh, as a stalker, right? And... Uh, his his job is basically uh to he, well he takes these two clients uh like i think one's a writer looking for like inspiration and the other one is a professor to seek a you know like 
scientific discovery and basically they go to like this mysterious site it's just known as the zone and in this uh area they there's a there's supposedly a room where it grants a person's innermost desires and it's more ph philosophical uh uh philosophical hmm. than uh than anything and uh but, but it's one of those films right you you, you i'm I'm just engrossed the entire time that I watch it. Um, how it's shot is is beautiful as well, uh, and uh, and it's one of those films. It's weird because when I first watched it, I I, I was like, oh okay, but it lingers on. The the the, it, the film just sticks into into the back of your head, and um, and then I I just think, oh oh my god, this. This is a classic, and uh, and it, you know, I I don't want to spoil anything too much in case people want to watch, but it's 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 very it's very tense throughout, and hmm. uh, and you feel like you you genuinely feel like a sense of anxiety, like and when they, but then you got like uh, it's kind of weird because you got the 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 main character just known as the stalker uh like he lives he lives with his uh, fa uh family uh uh his wife and his daughter and his daughter has been like um uh isn't very well uh she can't <clears throat> walk uh but and uh basically it's a crime to go to the zone and uh so 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 the the his wife isn't happy but he's doing it anyway uh and because it gives them a sense of purpose as well and because you know the the world of stalker is just very bleak and you know uh it's just just really mysterious and you've and oh. so you, again it's it's all for it's all philosophical psychological theological uh I, i'm pretty sure tarkovsky was like a uh like I think what, what pe uh, people say, he is the opposite to um, Stanley Kubrick. Uh -huh. uh, so like, like, because Kubrick was, I am, I'm pretty sure he wasn't that religious, and uh, whereas Tarkovsky was, uh, and and basically the film goes into the like questions of faith and and and, and with Russia. Or, or even you know, well, so it was the Soviet Union, but like, well, Russia has always had like throughout history, like, uh, this talk of um, the death of Christianity and stuff, and like, because they were more, um, you know, becoming less theistic and more uh, secular, secular, yeah. and this is like in a lot of like, uh, uh, like Russian novels, like you know, like Dostoevsky and um, uh, the. The guy who wrote Master and Margarita as well. There's yeah, yeah. Uh, that delves it's delves into that as well, and it's it's worth a watch. It's I, I will say it's like it's it's quite it's quite a long film. It's like um, nearly three hours, hmm. but and and usually I would think oh it's a, a bit long, but it's it's I I I enjoyed every moment of it, and there's some shots in there that are absolutely beautiful. Uh, but the thing is, what what it doesn't really end there. So while you could you could just take it as the film as it is, but yeah, this is what I was going to talk about. Actually, I think yeah, yeah. I the... think uh, you're going to mention the game. No, no, no. Oh, I mean, okay. Not okay. even the game. Not even. I mean, it is. Uh, it, it did spawn off a few like a, a successful game series and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But the 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 actual making of this film was. Uh, like one of the it's well how can i say it basically when they were shooting the film uh they had a lot of problems like they made the entire film but the film that they used uh 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 basically uh failed on them so they had to reshoot the film again oh and gosh. and so there was a lot of basically this film had a lot if, if you thought um uh, Apocalypse Now was a hard uh, movie that that got made. That I think this film trumps it because uh, they shot at, uh, uh, 
where they shot the film, there was like, uh, uh, basically there was they were shooting uh, in a radioactive zone, hmm. and yeah. the uh, a few uh, people who acted in the movie died, including the uh, the director. The uh, um, the original negatives of that of the film they use is still in a lead lined bunker. Because yes. they, they, it, it's too radioactive to have the originals. Uh, oh God! It's honestly, it's it's a whole other topic. Like it, it's almost as it, it's almost as fascinating and as like wide reaching as the books themselves. It's as, like uh, th- yes, you could you know like th- there's there's so much insanity behind the creation of that movie. There's just it doesn't sound real. Like it, and I think that's what makes the film even more. Uh, captivating and even haunting is because you know you got a great uh you know thriller uh it's very complex uh you know questioning life and existence and things like that but on top of that you got like a you know uh, the the making behind it and literally people died making Mm. this film and to me that's like it's such a it is like an art, like, like you know, I don't want to sound pretentious. There's there's movies and then there's art, and this is like, yeah, like okay. it is, a, it is uh, to me, this is like a very artist art film, and hmm. it should be remembered forever, basically. Uh, and so I think it will be. It sounds a lot more interesting than fucking Dune, I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah, so, Dan, I had some questions because obviously I've not seen the movie or read the book i've played the games which i hear are loosely based on it Mm. you you go to a place called the zone yes um so is radioactivity a theme in the film or is that just something that's kind of been picked up later by the games or well to be honest it's more like not even it's something else completely and it's like so yeah they have this thing called there's the the zone that they go to and it's very apocalyptic but they're, they're not going around with Geiger counters and and thinking oh no don't go over there it's read radioactive it's like like t- like don't go over there something's out there hmm. and they and I don't want to spoil it but they they don't really explain yeah. what it is i mean and that's the scary that's the more scary than anything in yeah the, i i mean hmm. that's kind of um like like in the game there's the kind of supernatural things happening there's also the radiation well what i find interesting is um the games obviously made a lot more recently and the film was made before the chernobyl disaster Yes. And hmm. I think the game takes on the Chernobyl disaster and ah. kind of integrates it into the lore a bit. Yes. Saying that Sounds basically like what if it went completely wrong sort of thing. And I haven't played it much, but I know there's a new one coming out. But I find it quite interesting because I think it also influenced uh, Metro as well. Yeah, uh, the Metro series, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I I definitely need to watch it. I think. Yeah, so yeah, I've it's heard great yeah, things it's worth. It. Um, I'd say uh, yeah, I recommend it to everyone. Basically, uh, it might not be like I say for everyone, uh, for sure. But I think once you do watch it, it's like it's because I I I it 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 was only like a couple of weeks later when it just sort of like after watching the movie, I was just like, oh yeah. I, there's nothing like it and it it you know it draws you back it's it's hmm. yeah great film nice uh right well i th- i think that wraps up part one of the talk toys 2021 wrap-up uh, unless anyone else has anything to add uh no no cool right no uh in that case um i will be back soon and i think the next part will be up it should be 24 hours time uh that'll be part two of the 2021 wrap-up where we will cover topics such as tv shows books 
my favourite internet thing and what we're looking forward to, because those are the four topics, so that I've, I yeah. just spoiled it, really. But if you want to listen to what our answers are for that, stay tuned, because part two is coming out imminently. Hey, I, I used hey. to finally... Right, well, on that, uh, on, on that, on that enthusiastic yay, goodbye. <laughs>